I just want to say a few things concerning the way to heaven. Being in this ministry for so long now, always petitioning God, Lord, what, especially as often as I preach, what do I say in this setting? And Don Demetrio was asking me some questions he wrote down with me yesterday. And maybe I can answer this about getting thoughts for what you preach. God has to really inspire you. And certain men have certain ministries. And my ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. I deal with salvation. I deal with heaven. I deal with the rapture. I don't have, I'm not putting down anybody else's ministry. I'm sorry, I just don't have some of the other ministries. I don't have the prosperity message. I don't have that one. That's just not me. I'm concerned about the final results. And so if someone is interested in, in heaven, this is a good place to stop by. And I had mentioned to the brethren right before we were on our way up to the mountains uh, concerning a telephone call that came to the house. We were kind of in a rush on, on uh, Thursday, and it, really I didn't want to fool with the call. But Sister Brown said they said they have to talk to you, and it was L.A. Focus newspaper. And so I said, I tell you what, just tell them to call me here at the house. And the first thing I thought was probably negative. I said, what did happen now? What, what, if, what have I done? <laughs> what are they going to question me about? And when the reporter got on the phone, I was quite surprised at what she wanted me to elaborate on. And she was concerned about terrorism and what's going on in the Muslim Islamic world and the uh, aftermath of 9-11 and basically what time it is and what were my feelings on that. And she said to me, she said, you know, I've been in your congregation a few times and heard you preach, and I know that you preach salvation and the rapture and the coming of the Lord. I said, that's true. And then she asked me a question. She said, um, do you think we're going to have a terrorist attack again in America? I said, we could. I said, I don't know, but I said, certainly is that possibility. And we're certainly uh, trying to prevent it, but it could happen. And then she said, well, are you afraid? And I said, no, I'm excited. And uh, I guess she probably thought I was crazy when I said that part. <laughs> and then I went on to explain why I was excited and gave her some history about what's going on in the Middle East and what I feel the Lord is soon to do. If there ever was a time for a minister to preach the finalization of salvation in the Christian church. Now is that time. Amen. And Elder Trump, we're so glad to see you here today. Thank you. For you. If our direction is from heaven, and I believe that it is, the season of the culmination of what the Lord promised he was going to do is upon us. And if that be the case, it would seem like the way of salvation ought to be preached continuously until he comes back. Amen. And I was sharing, I was saying, if you find a place that can tell you the way, you ought to stay there a while. The psalmist had wrote down and he said that the, the way of God is in the sanctuary. The way of God is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? That's why it's good to come to the sanctuary. There's a reason for coming week in, week out. That you might be encouraged because the place we live in is contrary to the things of God. Amen. And the question that I pose today is not a, a new one. In fact, Jeremiah records it and he says, Oh Lord, I know that 
the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. And then he said, oh Lord, correct me. What a humble request, because most people don't want to be corrected. I already got to know what I'm doing, but I want to be corrected, because I want to do what God wants me to do. Oh Lord, correct me, but with judgment. Then he says, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. I don't want you to be angry with me. Just need you to help me through here. Because I can't stand your anger. <laughs> and then Jeremiah goes on and Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. Here's the negative part. But they said, we will not walk therein. And they said, and I also have set watchmen, pastors, over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken sounds like the general response of most human beings. One of the precious questions that came to me up at the retreat, when the brethren was wondering, I don't believe he was being antagonistic, he was just wondering, now that I have a Holy Ghost, do I really need a pastor? I said, oh yeah, you need a pastor. You need somebody to teach you on a regular basis that God has ordained. Because if I'm left to myself, uh, I'm going to stumble along the way because I'm going to become a law to myself. And I don't just need any watchman. I need somebody who God has really called and ordained. Because it's clear in the scriptures to make it to heaven, there has to be an ambassador. And he gives the ambassador a message of reconciliation. And that ambassador stands between you and your God. I know that sounds awful heavy to you maybe, but that's the way it is. Someone has to preach to you on a regular basis and you can't play hooky. See, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? God has to raise up somebody. Human nature don't like this, but God's got to raise up somebody and put his spirit in them and give them divine direction to have him a church. Glory be to God. Says Peter, for me to have a church, I got to give you some keys. And I want you to know when I give you these keys, I'm going to use you to open up the doors of the church. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, and whatever you bind will be bound in heaven. I give you a message that will loose a man, a message that will take a man to glory. If he doesn't hear you, he'll be lost forever. But if he pays attention to what you're preaching, he'll be saved. And so thank God for the last 2,000 years he's been raising up one generation after another generation and somebody to preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Then the humble man said, Psalms 27, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies. False witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. When it comes to Jesus, 
He makes it quite narrow. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Mentions this in Matthew 7. For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. I guess the one depression I have to fight all the time is that I see so many come in and I know they've been introduced to the truth and then they slip away. And I wonder, where are you going? So many little things get in the way and cause people not to continue on in their walk. And that's why I've been preaching so much over here about forgiveness and bitterness and hatred. And, and, and those things get in and they cause disunity. And then when you get disunity, everybody gets fragmented. And so you, 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 you see all the problems taking place and so much of it is due to the fact that people don't come, sit, and listen, and apply. And apply. Amen. Just coming is not enough. Just hearing is not enough. Just having intellect in the Word of God is not enough. You got to apply what you hear. And so it takes a, a constant drilling and a preaching and a teaching, amen, that it gets all down in your spirit. So it motivates your life. A lot of problems come in the church. I've seen it in the last 35 years, going on 26 years of pastoring, and you hear so much negative stuff. I said, has anybody got victory? Huh, marriage is going haywire, families all disorientated, disunity, folk hating one another. I said, why? It can't be that big of a deal. We're only here a few moments. Can't we get along just a few more minutes? Can't somebody humble themselves and say, I'm praying for you and we're going to work this thing out some kind of way. So God gives you somebody, let me tell you something, uh, someone like myself, the devil even knows you. Amen. That's why you ought to pray for the pastor because the devil knows who's telling the truth. Amen. If you get sent into this place, know that God helped you get here. Else he would have sent you one of them other places because I'm a oneness preacher. And there ain't that many oneness preachers around. Ain't, ain't, ain't that many Jesus' name preachers around. So if you get directed into a oneness church, a, a, a Jesus' name church, a, a Holy Ghost filled church, know that God been kind to you because you could be somewhere else. Somebody said, you, oh, why you make a statement like that? In the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, you have to turn to it, there was a damsel. And she kept following, amen, uh, Paul and Silas. And one day they were on their way to prayer and she just kept on following them. Amen. And she had a spirit of divination. That means she was demon possessed. In other words, the devil, amen, was working through her. And she was able to uh, make fortune for those who she worked for. But she said something that was true. Uh, she said, now these men are the servants of the most high God who show us the way of salvation. Ain't that something for the devil to say that to her? Huh? said, now these men right here, they called of God, and they show us how to get to heaven. And hallelujah. And see, the devil, he came to church too. He just can't do nothing about this service because God is here. And if you really want to get loose, you're in the right place to get loose today because the master is in the house, and he'll stay the hand of the adversary, and I'll show you how to get to heaven if you'll obey it. Now my text. Give me 30 minutes and I'll try to wind it up. St. John 14. Hallelujah. When you read the 14th chapter of the book of St. John, it was a, just a short period of time before Jesus went to be crucified. And he allows Peter to know in the 13th chapter the conclusion, because Peter's talking real big, you know, 
I'm willing to die for you and I'll never deny you and all that. And he says, now Peter, you're going to deny me. And for the cock crow three times, you're going to deny me. And I'm sure Peter was probably shocked at the statement, but you know the story, many of you read it. But what I want is what was said immediately after the 38th verse of the 13th chapter. He said, after all that, and told him what he was going to do, he said, now let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. He takes him all the way to heaven and said, in my Father's house. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So he says, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, some of y'all may think he was preparing heaven. He spoke heaven into existence. Amen. The way, what he prepared, a way he went to Calvary. He had to go to the cross to prepare a way for us to get to heaven. So I go to prepare a way for you. And I am that way. And I am the only way. In spite of all the religions of the world, I'm exclusively the only way to get to heaven. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. He's not talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit in this particular portion of God's word. Amen. He really isn't talking altogether about him being resurrected from the dead. He's actually talking coming back for the church. I will come again. So he, uh, he spoke, amen, to, to these brethren crossing over 2,000 years that I will come again one day. And for the last 2,000 years, men like myself been preaching, he's coming back again. And it takes some type of discipline to keep on being excited, to, amen, about the coming of the Lord because the adversary is always trying to water down your faith and try to make you believe that God will not fulfill his promise. But the most exciting thing, what makes me not afraid, is that the Lord is coming back again. Again. And then he goes on to say, he says, and whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. And then this same Thomas, who, amen, who once again uh, has opportunity to talk, and he talks here and he talks in the 20th chapter, and he says, amen, this time, amen, he's not talking after the resurrection, he's talking before. He says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, saith unto him, I am the way. Let me stop with just the way. I am the way for you to get to heaven. Amen. So I was teaching this weekend, understand this, faith has to have an object. The object of our faith is Jesus Christ. The goal of our faith is heaven. You might as well come on and understand this. You're not going to be satisfied until you reach the intended end that is given us in the word of God and that's why you got to keep on building yourself up uh, on your most holy faith uh, that's why we were talking about we're earnestly contending uh, for the faith uh, that was once and for all uh, delivered unto the saints now faith is the substance uh, of things hoped for uh, and the evidence of things not seen uh, so we preach uh, about a culmination of a salvation uh, in the not too distant future uh, that God has prescribed for the human race uh, and God is going to have a segment uh, of the human race uh, to reign with him uh, throughout eternity. Uh, if you sit uh, in the school of holiness uh, for a period of time, uh, you won't think about going back um, to be in the household of faith um, and to be a child of the living God. There's not a higher position uh, on this planet. Uh, hallelujah. To be of the community uh, of genuine mystical believers uh, that are born to the water and of the spirit and are walking in the spirit. They have a finality that the human mind cannot even comprehend. But he said, in my father's house, don't you be afraid of anything, Peter. Don't let anything scare you. I'm coming back again. It's going to be a road that you're going to have to go on. But I want you to know at the end of the road, you'll end up in my presence. So don't be afraid of any situation that comes into your experience. I've already got you covered. I, I am that way.
What are you saying? I'm the doctrine. I'm the example. I'm the sacrifice. And by my spirit, I'm going to get you there. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's flip a few pages here. St. John 6. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. You're in the greatest place on earth right now. Whenever you're in a church, I'm not talking about just peace out, wherever the truth is being preached, you're in a glorious place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We were using the scripture at the retreat, and I was bringing it out, I guess it was at the retreat of yesterday, where the Lord said, what shall it profit a man? If he gained the whole wide world, Jock, if he gained the whole world and lose his soul, if he was in the Fortune 500 or one of the 400 richest men in the world, what would it profit him if he lost his soul? That ought to say something about how expensive your soul is. If you were a Gates or a Murdoch or a Sterling, hallelujah, or a Walmart descendant, what would it matter if you had all that money and your soul is lost? said, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? Uh, you know what the Lord is saying? Um, your soul is eternal. Amen. You cannot put a dollar figure on a soul, uh, a soul that is lost. Uh, they lose and I lose too. Uh, hallelujah. That's what he's saying. They lost uh, and I lose also. Uh, it's a loss to God and it's a loss to you. Uh, and that's why he came down uh, 42 generations uh, and stepped out of eternity into time uh, that he might seek and to save uh, that that's which is lost. I will not allow Adam and Eve's transgression, amen, to last forever. I'll raise up a second Adam, and this one will obey me. And though it takes 4,000 years for me to bring this second Adam, he will turn around and eradicate the damage of the first Adam. Hallelujah. And I'll wrap him in the same kind of flesh as the first Adam. But I want you to know his origin doesn't come from earth. His origin comes from heaven and he will obey my will hallelujah and what the first Adam put on you the second Adam will take off of you what the first Adam did the second Adam will eradicate and that's why we give him praise that God had a redeemer a reconciler a lamb to take away the sins of the world Jesus is that way he's the only way he's the only propitiation for sin he's the only Lamb of God. He is that way, and that's why we give him glory every day. St. John 6. Hallelujah. Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Glory be to God. Verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that you also have seen me and believe not, and all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Hallelujah. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, uh, that of all which he hath given me, uh, I should lose nothing, uh, but should raise it up again uh, at the last day. Uh, can I share this? And I hope the brother, hope you understand your pastor loves you. But I want to bring out a point. Uh, I was observing something at the retreat. Hallelujah. And one of the precious men that came up with us uh, didn't have the Holy Ghost when he went up. Uh, but it was no surprise to me uh, that God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you why. I saw him raise up his hand, and he kept trying, and he was worshiping, and he was praising God, and he was crying out to God. Hallelujah. I said, mm hmm look at him here. You would have thought he already had the Holy Ghost. But see, but before you get it, you got to learn how to be a praiser and a worshiper. And so he turned around, and he began, amen, he kept on praising God with all of us. And so we had a prayer line, and when we got down to the prayer line, uh, he got in the prayer line uh, and he walked on through. Uh, hallelujah. But that wasn't enough. Uh, 
it was something about the power that was in the house uh, that he turned around and got down on his knees. Uh, come on and stand up, Brother Schaefer. Everybody else sit down. Uh, he's the principal at Russell School. And sister, and he got filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and he began to raise up his hands uh, and the same mouth uh, that was giving him praise. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, heaven came down uh, and filled him with the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's something uh, about giving God praise uh, when you begin to worship him uh, and praise him. Uh, he was stretching out, uh, got down on his knees, and all of a sudden, uh, the brethren were praising God. It's good to be around some Holy Ghost-filled men. We ain't no sissies. We are in the army. We are contenders. We love the Lord. Some man ought to say, I'm all man, but I'm a saved man. Y'all don't want to say, I'm all man. I'm a saved man. I'm not a wimp because I cry. I'm not a sissy because I bow down. But I know in whom I'm raising my hands up. I know in whom I worship. And I came to give him glory because he's worthy. He's worthy. one night and my heart wasn't right but something got a hold to me something got a hold to me Holy Ghost got a hold to me let me finish this 6 and 39 oh hallelujah 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 glory 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 Glory, glory, glory. Tell somebody according to this word, he will not cast me out. According to this word, and I'm standing on it. I will not be lost. I will not be casted out. I said I will not be lost, and I will not be casted out. Oh, hallelujah. There's not a weapon on this planet that is able to prosper against me. God has fixed this thing. If I just remain in his will, I will receive my intended end. somebody he's gonna raise me up again I said I'm sure he's gonna raise me up again I said I'm positive that I'm getting up and I'm getting up in glory I'm sure about it Jesus was talking like this and many of the disciples went back. So he turned around to them. He said, will you go also? And Peter said, to whom shall we go? Tell somebody you might as well stay here. Jesus has the words of eternal life. Ain't no sense in leaving eternal life. I mean, where are you going? I mean, where are you going now? Once you get over here, you might as well drop anchor. Yeah, I said you might as well drop anchor. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Tell somebody I dropped my anchor. Say, neighbor, you know what an anchor's for? An anchor drops down in the bed of the sea that when the storms come, it don't drift out to sea. And I've dropped my anchor, and though there may be some tests, and there may be some trials, the wind may blow, but I've already dropped anchor. It may look like it's a little tempest, but I want you to know I got my anchor holding Jesus, and I shall not be moved. Glory, 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 glory. And then he 
says, and we believe. We believe. Lord Jesus, said, we believe. We believe. Tell somebody, I'm what I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The son of the living God. Tell somebody, that's what I believe. There's a whole lot of folk believing a whole lot of stuff, but I believe. Y'all don't want to help me here. There's a whole lot of folk believing a whole bunch of stuff, but I believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. I believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. I believe that he is Messiah. I believe. That Jesus is my reconciler. I believe that He is my redeemer. I believe that He's God all by Himself. St. John 10. Tell somebody, say, He's the way, and He's the only way. Tell somebody, He's something else. He's the door, and He's the only door to heaven. St. John 10. Verse number nine, I am the door, and by me, if any man, if any man enter in, shall be saved. If he comes through this door, he'll be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. That's another reason to give God glory. It's good to praise him for the stars in the sky, and it's good to praise him for his power to create, and it's good to praise him for food on your table, but it's better to praise him for the very being that he is, that he thought so much about you and I that he came all the way from glory down so I praise him for being the good shepherd the chief shepherd the bishop of my soul I praise him for being the good shepherd the chief shepherd and the bishop of my soul he's the overseer of my soul and I praise him and I respect him for who he is come on here let's thank God this Sunday for being the door to heaven Somebody ought to step through. Say, neighbor, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What's his name? Oh, say it like Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's a way maker. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. He's the way to glory. Hallelujah. Say, neighbor, don't you want to go to heaven? Don't you want to get out of this? Don't you want to come out of this? There is a way. Ephesians 2. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, glory. Almost finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may have stumbled in here, but you stumbled in the right place. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't stumbling back out. Glory, glory. I'm, I'm over here to stay. Thank you, Jesus. Earnestly contending. I mean, we hold it on. I don't care what happens in your life down here, hold on to the name of Jesus. When you don't know how to pray, just say Jesus. If you can't get all your words together, Lord Jesus, make intercession for me. There's something about that name that radiates through the heaven. He knows his name. I hear somebody calling my name. And when I hear somebody calling, my ears are open to the righteous night and day. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. glory. Ephesians 2, thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Like to call it in the morning when I rise. Like to call it at night when sleep is crawling across my eyes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful name. I said, I'd like to call it in the morning when I rise. And I like to call it at night when sleep is crawling across my eyes. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all are here. Glory. 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 Tell somebody there's power in that name. 
there's something about having faith in that name. He said, even the devil's got to back up. In my name, you'll cast out devils. In my name, you'll speak with new tongues. It's all in my name. There's power in my name. In the name of Jesus, there's power in the name. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Tell somebody I got on my traveling shoes now. I can walk now. Got on my traveling shoes. Hallelujah. I said I can walk now. I said I can walk now. I got on traveling shoes. Hallelujah. And I've been tempted and I've been tried, but I've been to the water and I've been baptized. I stepped in the water and the water was cold. It chilled my body, but it saved my soul. I can travel now. Got on my traveling shoes. I said I can travel now. Walk together, children. Don't you get weary. There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. I said, walk together, children. Don't you get weary. Don't you be discouraged. Don't you give up. It's going to be a great camp meeting in the promised land. So walk, 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 walk. Ephesians 2. Tell somebody, he sure is excited. And if you don't get excited, you ain't going nowhere. You got to get excited. And you can't play like you excited. You got to really be excited. You got to have your neck stretched out. You got to be breathing this thing. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all, I feel like preaching, but I can't. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Will y'all help me right now? Say, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day. And though the skin worms eat my body, yet, 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 I shall see him in my flesh. Hallelujah. I know, I'm sure that my Redeemer liveth. Tell somebody, I'm going to see him who paid for me. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody said, what did he, who did he pay it to? Say, divine justice. Uh-huh. It went for divine justice. He couldn't accept me unless he purchased me. So he had to appease his divine justice. And the only thing that he appeased the divine justice is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus appeases the divine justice. So thank God for the blood. That's why you ought to shout every time you think about whose name you was baptized in. Baptize them in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sin. Call on my name. The blood is in my name. Mitchell, if you could have saw from spiritualized from glory, when we took you down in water, though it looked clear, what God saw was blood. He saw blood. He just saw him drenched in blood. He saw blood. When he saw the blood, he couldn't see his past. Couldn't see his sin. He said, my blood done covered you. Now when I pass by, when I pass by, I'll pass over you. Because when I see the blood, when I see my blood, when I see my blood, oh, I'll pass over. Death can't have you. The death angel can't have you. Because the blood has cleansed you. Thank God for the blood. Ephesians 2. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Tell somebody it's just dripping all over me. 
The blood of Jesus is dripping all over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God it's a bloody salvation. But it's precious blood. It's precious blood. It's the blood of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Life is in the blood of Jesus. Eternal life is in the blood of Jesus. Ephesians 2. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, glory. 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 I, I don't want y'all to get mad at me about this, but I, I'm not thinking I'm the only one in the world to say I'm glad I'm one of them. Amen. But you know what? I'm going to really thank God today that I'm in this way. Amen. This is a marvelous way. It's a foolproof way. This is the way. Jesus is the way. Oh, come on here. Ephesians 2. That devil tried to make you not praise and see you think you're better than everybody. No, I don't think none of that. I'm just glad I'm saved. I wish everybody would come off a of figure roll and get saved, but I'm already in here. And I'm staying in here. And I ain't gonna get so mad I'm leaving out of here. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Devil is a lie. Devil is a lie. He's a liar. Ephesians 2. Watch out now. Now here's where the Holy Ghost kicks in. The way, the way, the way. This is the only way. Verse 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. The Holy Ghost gives you access to eternity. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens, talking about heaven now, with the saints and the household of God. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 22. In whom you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Hallelujah. hallelujah. There is no substitute for the Pentecostal experience. There's no substitute for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. It gives me access into heaven. Abba, Father, glory to God. Glory to God. Hebrews 10, have a good trip back to Detroit. Hebrews 10. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number 19, almost finished. Verse 19 says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Look at that, Haman. We entered into the holy of holies the holiest, but we couldn't get there without the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. By a new and living way, thank God for the Holy Ghost, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, that's his humanity, suffering and Calvary. Then he says, let us, oh, I want you to underline these two verses here. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from our evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Somebody ought to get baptized today. Sprinkling is not washing. Immersion takes the whole body under. And by faith in God's name, by faith in the gospel, when you really change your mind, hallelujah, and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection, and, and ascension of Jesus, and are baptized, you're buried with him in baptism, and you rise up to walk in the newness of life. Glory to God. Let us hold fast. That's why we earnestly contend in. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. And there's a reason. For he is faithful. He's faithful. That promised. God is faithful. He cannot lie. Might I say as I get ready to close down, you will never be made ashamed by putting all your trust in Jesus' name. You'll never be put to shame by trusting in the gospel. And that's why Paul can say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
Psalms 86, and we'll close out. Hallelujah. And notice this request. Thank God for the way. Verse 6 says, give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer. Somebody might have been praying last month or year, a week. God's answering your prayer right now. Amen. You're in the right place for your prayer to be answered. And attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For thou art great and dost wondrous things. And I love this. And thou art God alone. Now watch the request. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Uh-oh. Then he says, I'm going to do something. I will praise thee, O Lord my God. With all my heart, I will glorify thy name forever. For great is thy mercy toward me. And thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Hallelujah. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. I can tell by your response you didn't get it. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name, to honor your name, Lord Jesus. I will praise thee. It's individual. There was a time as for me in my house. Now it's as for me. As for me, I will praise thee. I want all my children and my wife, everybody to pray, but I will praise thee. Oh Lord my God. With all my heart, come on, don't say, say somebody, don't hold back nothing. Don't hold back. Give it up. Give it up. Give him all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength. Love me with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. glorify thy name forever. Tell somebody, I won't stop. I won't stop praising him. I won't stop. I won't stop worshiping. I won't stop. If I'm irritating you, excuse me, I just won't stop. I can't stop. It, if it's bothering you, I'm sorry, but I just can't stop. I came here this Sunday morning to worship. Say, neighbor, let me tell you why. For great is his mercy toward me. Oh, y'all ain't saying it. He been merciful to me. When I look back over my life, I said he been merciful to me. When I think about what he brought me out of, been merciful to me. I said, I'm so glad I didn't go into the grave without knowing this. I'm so glad. He delivered me from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I had somebody to help me give God some glory. Great is your mercy toward me.
Now say, neighbor, he has delivered my soul from the lowest hell. It's heaven for me and not hell. Say, neighbor, I'm so glad I'm not going to hell. said on my way to hell I hit I hit a cross and the cross turned me around and I just want to give him the glory let me say this to you if you can stand up at a concert and applaud a dope smoking, coke snorting, cigarette smoking, alcohol drinking entertainer and stand on your feet and clap like you lost your mind, you can stand on your feet and shout over somebody taking a basketball and dropping it through a net or stand on your feet and shout because somebody takes a pig skin and runs across the line. What about standing on your feet and giving God the glory for coming up out of the grave? For coming up out of the grave. What about giving him glory for coming up out of the grave? And Jock, you know what ought to really make you shout? He said, I got all of the power. I got all of the power in heaven and in earth. I applaud you, Lord Jesus, for having all of the power.
Ghost. Say, neighbor, I remember when I got the Holy Ghost. Do you? Why don't you act like you did when you got it? What's stopping you now? Why don't you act like you did when God filled you with the Holy Ghost? Why don't you shout like you did? Why don't you praise him like you did when you got the Holy Ghost? Glory! Glory! Remember when the thank you, Jesus, turned into another language? You remember when the hallelujahs turned into another language? is crazy up in here. Let me get crazy too. Oh Lord, give me back my shout. Give me back my praise. Let me push everything out of the way that hinders. Give God some glory.